Have you been noticing fluctuations in your liver enzyme levels? And maybe you're wondering if this is something you should be worrying about or what the actual cause for these fluctuations could be. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, that's what we're going to address, looking at another aspect of your health, fluctuating liver enzymes, and when you should be concerned and when it may not be such a big deal. If you're getting a lot out of these videos and you want to continue getting videos like this, hit that like and subscribe button. Let's jump into the video. So in this video, we want to help you understand the significance of fluctuating liver enzymes and when you might want to have a little bit more concern about what's going on with your liver health. So liver enzymes like AST, ALT, and GGT are all critical indicators of your liver health. They help us diagnose liver conditions and help us monitor whether or not your liver function is normal or possibly abnormal. And when they're above the optimal ranges, typically I look at that as 25, which can be a little bit higher for males and a little bit lower for females. But the optimal range is going to be roughly around 25 units per liter. And that's going to indicate when they're above that, that you're having a little bit more turnover in the liver tissue and possibly other parts of your body. Now, I've gone into some detail in other videos about other tissues and things that might be involved and the significance of higher ALT versus higher AST. But the long and short of it is the ALT is more specific to liver tissue. GGT may have more to do with problems with the gallbladder, and the AST is still important for the liver, but could have something to do with muscle as well. And so when you're seeing higher levels in your blood tests, that basically means that the cells of those tissues are spilling their contents into the blood. Usually that's going to happen because there's some kind of damage there. Well, if you're exercising, for instance, those cells do get damaged from intense exercise and the contents of those cells do spill their enzymes into the blood. And so they're going to show up there on your blood test. So before we jump into when and why you might want to be concerned when your liver enzymes are high, I wanted to point out a little bit more on the reference ranges. So even though lab normal reference ranges are going to look a little bit higher than what I just said, the ALT can range anywhere from around 7 to 56, and the AST can range anywhere from around 10 to 40 units per liter. And the GGT is usually even broader than that, 15 to even 60 or 65 units per liter. And so the point here is that the ranges that the lab is giving you is based on a population at large, and that population has been having steadily higher and higher liver enzymes over time. And this has been well validated that the population at whole is being exposed to more toxins and different things in the environment that's leading to globally normal ranges going higher. Now, liver enzymes can go up for many different reasons, and we want to categorize them and discuss that in the context of two kind of different ideas. One is going to be more of a persistent elevation, and the other would be more of a transient elevation, short term. Maybe it goes up and then it goes right back down. So these are kind of two different ideas we want to look at. So transient versus persistent also gets at the heart of what's important with understanding what causes your liver enzymes to go up, and that is testing to really understand this. So transient elevations are often going to be caused by temporary factors, such as some kind of recent strenuous activity, exercise, maybe you did some kind of race that you're not really used to, or sometimes it could be from new medications that are being introduced or increase alcohol consumption on the week before the test or days before the test. These will usually normalize without any specific intervention. So when you go back and do your lab follow-up, you're going to see that these liver enzymes are now normal suddenly. And so that seems to be more of the culprit or likelihood that something like that is going on. You just want to simply retest and not get too worked up about it. You can wait Make sure all those things are out of your system. Make sure you're not consuming any Tylenol. Don't exercise a ton right before the test. And make sure you're avoiding alcohol. If there's a new medication on board, you may want to wait a month or so before you test. Let your body get used to that and see if those levels don't normalize. Now, each one of these things should be taken independently because you really want to know if that's the problem. So, for example, if you consume alcohol on a fairly infrequent basis, and you're not sure if it's the alcohol or exercise, 
cut one of those things out, make sure it's not part of the problem, and then go do your blood test if you're doing both. Of course, if there's a clear connection, like I did a tough mutter or I did a 10K and then my liver enzymes were high, well, it's pretty clear that's what it was. You can go ahead and recheck. As far as exercise go and its impact on the transient elevations of those numbers too, it's good to get a creatinine kinase test because that will also show slightly high or actually high if you've done some kind of strenuous exercise close to the test and you're seeing high liver enzymes, that could be why. So now I want to talk a little bit more about some of the persistent elevations or continuous elevations in liver enzymes. These obviously are a little bit more concerning and high levels could indicate some kind of more chronic issue like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, also known as NAFLD, or could also be some kind of viral hepatitis that's chronic, something that is chronically stimulating your liver to be a little bit more inflamed, even things like bacterial overgrowth, also known as SIBO, chronic viral infections, exposure to some kind of toxin, chronic medication exposure, and sometimes even supplements that we think are helping us, helping our liver could be actually problematic. So you want to make sure you're looking at all the possibilities when it comes to persistent elevations in your liver enzymes. So one by one, you want to eliminate all the possibilities starting with the most obvious that I already mentioned, which are more transient, and then leading into some of the more persistent elevations. And one of the most common and hidden causes of this is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. But let's look at this a little more globally. So when there's some kind of cellular damage in the hepatocytes, which are the liver cells, it's going to cause the liver cells to release that AST and ALT. And elevations in the ALT generally is more specific to the liver, and injury there is going to cause elevations to the AST and the ALT. So elevations in the ALT are generally more specific to the liver tissue, whereas elevations in the AST can be caused by other non-liver-related disorders, such as sometimes celiac disease or hemolysis of red blood cells, and even muscle disorders, not just exercise, but things that are chronically damaging muscle tissue. And as I said, normal levels for the ALT are going to be around 29 to 33 units per liter for males and a little bit lower, like 19 to 25 units per liter for females. I also wanted to mention a lesser known fact about elevated liver enzymes, which has to do with bacterial overgrowth and issues within the intestine. SIBO, also known as small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, can contribute or be a causative factor for chronic elevations in liver enzymes. This is something that I've specifically seen in my practice that after treating SIBO, liver enzymes tend to normalize in some people some of the time. This has also been validated in research studies as well. The overgrowth of the bacteria in the small intestine can lead to increased permeability in the intestines, often referred to as leaky gut, and this can allow bacteria and the toxins from those microbes to enter into the circulation, most of which goes directly into your liver, leading to systemic inflammation, yes, but specifically more stress on the liver. When that liver tissue, liver cells are damaged, you're going to see those contents of those liver enzymes in your blood as elevated liver enzymes. Another more common cause, which is often overlooked as well, is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. People get worried that they have some kind of problem going on in their liver that suddenly popped up out of nowhere, but a lot of times it is coming from the ongoing insulin resistance in their body, leading to increased carbohydrate load on the liver, leading the liver to need to produce those triglycerides, and eventually that fat, that triglyceride, damaging those liver cells. So when should you actually be concerned? Well, for me and my patients, anytime the levels are above optimal range, you should have some concern. Mild elevations might be like one and a half to one times the upper limit. And that may not be super alarming, but moderate to severe levels, like two to three times the normal range, that's going to require some more specific attention. Remember also that the more persistent those levels are elevated, the more damage that's occurring to that liver tissue and the liver cells. And the liver is an incredibly resilient organ, perhaps one of the most resilient organs of all. But just like when you injure a tendon in your shoulder or some other part of your body, the inflammation and in immune response will heal that tissue the first time, the second time, the third time. 
But over time, your tissues tend to get more resistant to that healing process, leading to scar tissue and something known as fibrosis. If we remove the cause for that shoulder injury and no longer injured again, probably everything's going to be just fine. However, long-term repeated inflammation in that tendon or the liver tissue is going to lead to a more necrotic process where fibrosis, scar tissue is going to set in. So mild elevations over shorter periods of time, probably going to be fine. Obviously, you want to figure out what's causing that, remove that, and not have to worry about it. Intermediate and longer term elevations, even if they're mild, can be concerning because of this ongoing inflammatory process that's occurring in that liver tissue. Given the huge and most common impact is from diet causing non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, this is the best place to start, of course, after you've ruled out some of the more obvious things that we discussed above. So in order to sort of verify this, what you can do is check for things like insulin resistance. These would be tests like a fasting insulin level, a lipid test that looks at your HDL and triglycerides, hemoglobin A1C, and possibly even doing a continuous glucose monitor test to see what's happening with your blood glucose throughout the day. If any of these tests are abnormal, it highly suggests that at least part, maybe all of your elevated liver enzymes is coming from fatty liver and the damage of the triglycerides in increased carbohydrate load on the liver. So hopefully this helps you better understand liver enzyme fluctuations and when you should be concerned. If you do have any questions about anything in this video, drop it in the comment section. We'll see you next time. And until then, you might want to check out one of my other liver enzyme videos here.